Hi, I'm Matt Helmers with the Department of Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering at Iowa State University and also with the Iowa Learning Farms Project. We're here today to talk about our rainfall simulator to look at the impacts of land management practices and how those may impact water runoff, water flow, and also soil erosion and soil loss. So we're going to turn on our rainfall simulator now and we're going to rain on all of these five trays at the same amount. These first four trays are intense tillage, our minimum till where we have about 30% residue cover but there's still been soil disturbance, our no-till system, and then the perennial vegetation. These four trays all come from the same field uh, in eastern Boone County, west of Ames just a little bit. Our no-tillage system is, is a long-term no-till. It's been in no-till for about 10 to 20 years at least, um, other than uh, some injection of fertilizer at times and planting uh, of the system. Uh, but we can see here that, that this intense tillage, uh, we're getting runoff very quickly. Um, the rainfall over time has created a surface seal there. We have no protection on the soil surface. Every time that, that raindrop falls, we're getting splash, detachment, and then it's carrying that sediment with it. So if we look at this bottle down here, we can see a lot of runoff and the color, we're seeing a lot of sediment in that water. As we move to our minimum tillage, we can see a little bit less total volume of runoff in there. And also, if we, if we look real carefully, maybe less uh, soil that we're losing as well. That little bit of residue on there uh, protects that, that soil surface from that raindrop energy. Um, and also, that residue on there tends to, to break up that flow pathway so it's a little more uh, difficult or tortuous path for that water to get from the, the top of the tray all the way to the bottom. But we're still seeing a fair bit of soil that's lost in that system. Now we have our no-till system where we're not disturbing that, that soil other than planting and as I said some, some injection of fertilizer but we have a very vibrant soil structure so that that water can move into the soil uh, rather than running off and so right now we're really seeing water that's moving through the soil system picked up with our tile line and down in here rather than running off off the soil surface. So that, that uh, lack of tillage is doing two things. We have that residue on the top that protects that soil surface from that raindrop energy. Also, if the water would start to move, it's a very tortuous path, so the velocity is going to be less, and our ability to transport sediment would then be less. But also, because we've not disturbed that soil, we've built up that soil structure such that the capacity to, to move water into the soil rather than running off is greater. We see the same thing with our perennial system here. We're not seeing any runoff water, a dry bottle in the runoff, uh, but we do have water that's moving through the soil and picked up by the tile line. This uh, perennial vegetation, similarly to our no-till system, we have that, that cover and it protects the soil surface, but also there's a lot of water that's just retained right in that, that canopy or the leaf material on that vegetation. Uh, that can hold quite a bit of water. So for some of our smaller rain events, some of that rain doesn't even make it all the way to the soil surface just because of uh, how much water is retained uh, within the, the canopy of the leaves and then would then could then be evaporated off uh, that leaf surface um, after, after the rainfall event. All right, now we looked at our four soil trays um, there. Uh, now we have one kind of like our urban environment. We see here, this is our impermeable surface, kind of like our parking lots, driveways, sidewalks, roads that we might have. And we can see a lot of water running off there. Virtually all the water that falls on there runs off. Anything that was on that surface, such as, uh, you know, antifreeze, oil residue, dirt, uh, fertilizer, if we've applied fertilizer to our lawn and it's gotten on the sidewalk or the driveway or the street, that's going to go right to our storm sewer and right down uh, to the stream. And so that's something that uh, we need to do a good job where we have uh, agriculture in some of our disturbed soils. We need to do a good job of protecting what runs off, but also in our urban environment. That's why in many areas, one of the things that's being looked at is, can we use pervious asphalt or in this case, uh, pavers, pervious pavement, and these are pervious pavers where we have some gravel in between each of the, the bricks. And you can see here, 
we're getting essentially no runoff. That water is going to move through that, that sub-base system and out and drain out here. Um, and then it would move more slowly to the stream rather than just being direct runoff. And so a lot of urban environments now we're looking at how can we um, design that urban landscape to maximize water retention and reduce the rate at which water moves from wherever it lands to the stream. So slow it down and really kind of a guiding principle in, in all of our systems is really let's slow the flow of water. The more we can slow it down, um, the more we can get it to move through the soil. Once it gets to the stream, it's likely cleaner. Uh, when water's moving slower, it can't carry as much sediment. Uh, so really, slow the flow of water is something that we want to do uh, whenever, whenever possible. So this is kind of, kind of our system, and, and we can see again here we're about full with this intense tillage system and really no runoff yet from our, our no-till. Now one of the things we're going to do is we're going to close that drain on our no-till system. Um, one of the reasons we're not getting runoff is that our rainfall intensity is not greater than the infiltration capacity of that soil. But now if we close that, that drain line, it's like there's nowhere for that water to go. We're going to start to saturate that soil surface and we're going to end up getting runoff off that system. So a lot of times during some of our chronic wet periods, we may get high water table conditions where essentially the water table comes all the way to the ground surface and really there's no storage capacity within our soil, in which case that rainfall that we get, a good portion of that is going to start to, to run off. And that's what we're seeing now. Now we, we close that that drain so that water um, can't come out the bottom. So we've saturated that soil all the way to the surface and we start to see some surface ponding on there and we're start, starting to see some water uh, running off. Um, a fair bit of water but we can notice there's hardly any sediment in that water. It's very clean water so there is some water coming out but very clean which is what we want. We don't want this type of water getting into our streams. We want this kind of water. It's going to be a lot better for aquatic health um, uh, and the, the other systems that, that want to function in our stream. Uh, it's going to make them a lot more enjoyable to recreate in. Um, okay, now we have this system saturated all the way to the soil surface. We're getting that runoff. In a second here, I'm going to open our drain line and we'll see what happens to our runoff rate. We can see a pretty steady stream of water coming out there, uh, but now we're gonna allow some drainage, artificial drainage to occur within that soil system, and we'll see uh, what happens to our runoff rate. There, I opened up our, um, our drain line, and you can see now we're down to about a trickle running out there. So when we have those very wet soils, the water has to go somewhere. It's either gonna move through the soil or move over the soil. Um, and so we can see here in this case when, we've had, when we have that drain taking that water and allowing uh, some capacity to move water into the soil where it's not fully saturated, we're having it come out down below here but we're reducing that surface water runoff. So that's an important characteristic uh, that in those saturated soil conditions that drainage can help reduce surface runoff. You know good percentage of that water is still making it out of the system, it's just that it's being routed ver via a subsurface drain rather than with that surface runoff. And we'll, we'll try this again, we'll turn off our drain, now we're going to rain on that system. Very quickly we start to see some ponding occurring uh, on the top of that soil where there's some, some ponding in some of those little micro depressions that are on there. Um, and pretty quick we'll start to see, we're starting to see a few drops there starting to see more ponding along the, the edge of our, our tray there, um, and there we go. Now we're starting to see more runoff, more surface runoff from that system uh, when we have that, that drain closed. And there's our pretty good stream of water uh, when, we, when we have no drainage allowed in that no-till system. And now we'll open that drain up one more time and we'll see that the now our surface runoff stops but we'd end up getting more water running through the the 
through the soil profile. Okay, one, one other reason that's important, that water that's running off the soil surface carries um, sediment with it, obviously, we can see that. Also, phosphorus is, is primarily transported with that sediment bound to, bound to sediment, sediment bound phosphorus. We can also get some bacteria and herbicides that would be in that runoff water. Uh, so the more we can reduce that runoff, the more we can reduce the loss of some of those pollutants. Now, we do need to be concerned that water that moves through the soil profile um, that may be captured by our tile line might have nitrate in it, or, or most likely does. Um, we generally see low levels of nitrate, um, nitrate nitrogen in our runoff water, but we'd see more of that in the drainage water. So this type of system here where we're reducing the runoff, that would increase or could increase our nitrate nitrogen that's coming out down below, but we are reducing that soil erosion or phosphorus that's coming off the surface. So here we, again, we put that, we close that drain, we're gonna see more runoff. Um, and if we're concerned about that runoff water from the contaminants in there, um, then we'd like that water to move through the soil profile rather than over the profile. Uh, as we start thinking about uh, practices that we can, we can use to, to help with some of this nutrient loss, um, anything that we can protect that soil surface and slow that flow of water down, we can reduce some of that soil erosion and, and phosphorus loss. Things like cover crops may provide protection and slow the rate of water runoff. Buffer systems at the edge of our field are intermixed uh, within our row crop landscape. We can maybe slow that flow of water, slow that, that transport capacity of sediment, drop out that sediment, drop out that phosphorus. Um, now if we have water coming out down below, like in a tile line where we maybe are concerned about nitrate, some of the things we can do there are look at cover crops that maybe reduce that residual nitrate in the profile, take that up uh, and reduce the risk of loss. We can also have, some, have a system that captures and treats that water that's coming out of the drain uh, and remove that nitrate. Things like nutrient removal wetlands, uh, subsurface drainage bioreactors, both of those were routing that drainage water that's high in nitrate into those systems, promoting denitrification and removing that nitrate and converting it to a, to a nitrogen gas, in which case we're reducing that overall downstream load of nitrate. So this, this system that we have here kind of highlights how our land management practice practices impact how much water runs off or runs through the soil and how what we do on the land can impact the quality of the water that's running off and also highlights how um, different management systems that we have can can impact the pathways of water movement where it is either over the soil surface or into the soil and out some subsurface tile line. I'm Matt Helmers with Iowa State University and the Iowa Learning Farms Project. If you want more information about the Iowa Learning Farms, just Google Iowa Learning Farms. You can see more information about our conservation station, other how-to videos on how we can look at increasing no-till, increasing the amount of strip-till that we're doing, cover crops, um, and then some other, other practices that we might be able to use to, to minimize uh, nutrient export and sediment export from our agricultural lands.